The following story took place in a converted apartment house in Riverside, California, where each floor contained separate living quarters. The first people to move into the new apartments were a couple by the name of Patrick and Laura Kinnear, who rented the downstairs apartment. Two weeks later, a single young mother by the name of Missy Singleton moved into the upstairs apartment with a baby of 11 months called Sam. Patrick and Laura helped the young mother with her moving. Missy would love to cook and often shared meals with Patrick and Laura, and they in turn would share their meals with the young mother. Patrick and Laura would often babysit for Missy, and after a period of time, looked upon Sam as if he were their own son. Their close relationship allowed Missy to find a part-time evening job, which worked out well for the couple, as they worked during the day and were available to babysit in the evening. Patrick and Laura always left for work at 8 o'clock in the morning, and Missy would often go downstairs to their apartment in the afternoon to help with their laundry, and would often prepare their evening meal. As part of a routine, Patrick always did the dishes, whilst Laura played with Sam, and Missy showered, ready for work. When she came home, Sam would be tucked up in bed. It was the perfect arrangement. The daily routine became the norm, until one afternoon, as Missy was cleaning up after lunch, she could hear the sound of someone moving around in the downstairs apartment. Surely Patrick or Laura would have mentioned to her that one of them was going to be home that day. After hearing doors being opened and closed, she then heard music drifting up through the floor. Missy was now curious, so she picked up Sam and went downstairs. She knocked on the door but there was no answer, but she could now clearly hear the music that sounded as if it was coming from an old radio. Missy slowly opened the door and held it ajar as she peeked inside and called out to Laura and Patrick. An unfamiliar voice then answered, well, hello, come in and sit yourself down. She looked to where the voice was coming from and could see an old man with white hair sitting beside the radio. The man was very old and wrinkled, and she was alarmed by his presence, as she had no idea who he was, and Patrick and Laura had never mentioned him. Although he had a strange face, he had kind, sparkling eyes that eased any sense of panic. Had he been a young man, she would have run out screaming. She found the man to be kind and gentle as she continued to clutch Sam closely to her chest. She slowly made her way to the centre of the room, but at the same time kept her eye on the door, if she needed a quick exit. She asked the man who he was, and what he was doing here, and he said that his name was Gilbert, but everyone called him Gil. He said that when his wife died, there was not much to live for, and the only family member was his nephew, but because he was so busy, he rarely saw him, so he sold his home in Oregon, and moved here to California to be closer to him. As they spoke, Missy started to relax and offered to make them both some lemon tea. As Missy was preparing tea, she was concerned whether it was safe to leave Sam on the carpet with a perfect stranger, even though he appeared to be old and harmless. As she entered with the teas, she could see them both playing and Sam was laughing and pulling the old man's shoelaces. She then placed Gil's tea down on a small table close to where he was sitting and sat Sam down onto her knee across from where Gil was sitting. As Gil sipped his tea, he told her how much he loved listening to the radio and spoke about his family, where Missy became confused by so many names and who was who. A strong smell started to emanate from Sam, where she realised it was time for a nappy change. She listened to the old man for another 20 minutes because she did not want to appear rude. But the smell had gotten so bad that she had to excuse herself in order to change him and went back upstairs to her apartment. As she was upstairs, she continued to hear music coming from downstairs, but decided to stay upstairs in her apartment until Patrick and Laura arrived home. She also felt exhausted after listening to Gil's family stories and drifted off to sleep. She was suddenly awoken by a knock at the door when Patrick told her it was almost time for dinner. As Missy entered their apartment, she apologised for not washing the cups and then looked around to see where the old man was and assumed he was outside as their patio doors were open. As she all sat down to eat, Missy inquired about Gil and whether he would be joining them for dinner. Laura just looked at Missy and said, Who? Patrick's uncle Gil, who she had met that afternoon. Patrick said, My uncle? I don't have an uncle Gil. Missy then figured he only knew him as Gilbert and said, Your man's name is Gilbert, but he said everyone called him Gil. Patrick then looked at Missy, more confused than ever, and said, I do not have an uncle Gilbert or an uncle Gil. The couple then both looked uneasily at Missy. 
Now totally confused, Missy then gave a full account of her surprising encounter that afternoon. Patrick and Laura offered no explanation as to who this old man could possibly be. The radio was turned off when they arrived home, and the only evidence that someone else had been in the room was that there were two cups in the sink. The couple were happy to dismiss the encounter, but Missy was not prepared to let the matter rest and looked totally distraught. Missy then thought hard in her mind to find some sort of clue that could confirm that the afternoon with the old man was not just a dream. However, if she'd been dreaming, why were there two dirty cups sitting in the sink? The cups were exactly where she'd placed them before going upstairs to her apartment to change Sam. To put Missy's mind at ease, Patrick said that he would look into the matter tomorrow, but in the meantime, let's eat before everything gets cold. The following day, Patrick phoned the owner of the apartment, a Mr. Bernhardt, to inquire whether anyone else had a key to the house, and was assured that the locks had definitely been changed. Patrick then relayed the incident about the encounter that Missy had had with the old man, but Mr. Bernhardt could offer no explanation and said maybe someone had left the door unlocked that had allowed a vagrant to enter the premises. Not fully satisfied with Mr. Bernard's explanation, he again spoke to him that evening, stating that there was no way anyone could have entered the house because everything had been securely locked when they left the house that morning. Missy had not been out of her apartment that day, so the old man was able to get into their apartment with his own key. Three weeks later, Mr. Bernhardt had arrived to click the rent, just as Missy was preparing to leave for work, and Patrick and Laura were looking after Sam. The owner inquired whether anyone had seen any more of the old man, which they hadn't. On this occasion, Mr. Bernhardt was curious as to who this person could have been, and asked for a more detailed description so that he could inform the police if he ever returned. He felt it was his responsibility to keep his tenants safe and secure, as next time there might be a more serious incident other than a harmless old man. Mr. Bernhardt then wrote down more details and told them that he would discuss the matter with police in the morning. It was at this point that the colour suddenly drained from Mr. Bernhardt's face. And as he looked up from his notes, he had to grab a chair to steady himself. Laura quickly gave him a drink of water, which Mr. Bernhardt sipped very slowly. Mr. Bernhardt now had tears rolling down his face and began to explain why he was suddenly so shocked. It was the date Missy had given him and a description of the old man that suddenly dawned on him. He said that this was his uncle Gilbert's house and he left it to me when he died. He always sat in the chair and pointed to the corner of the room and loved to listen to the radio. The description you gave me fitted him exactly as he looked like Uncle Gilbert because although he was slightly creepy looking, he had kind eyes. He now wanted Missy to give him in detail everything he'd said and how he looked. Missy then went over everything in fine detail. She told him about the relatives that he'd spoken about, and Mr. Bernhardt was able to confirm everything. He then looked at Missy and said to her, Uncle Gilbert was like a father to me, and we would often sit in this room and talk as he listened to the radio. Missy apologised for upsetting him, but Mr. Bernhardt quickly told her that she had not upset him, and as a matter of fact, he was happy and thanked everyone for being so understanding. He even gave them a month's free rent and apologised if his Uncle Gilbert had upset them. He said that the date that Missy had seen his Uncle Gilbert was on the anniversary of his death. 